I'm trying to get to the most remote cabin in Nova Scotia. I have four days to do the trip. It's an in and out, and it's gonna take all that time to get there and back. I'm starting this trip in a national park, which is the first 20 kilometers. And I need to get out of here before nightfall because it's currently closed and you can't sleep here. Don't have much time to do it. There's a lot of big portages. We're in the shoulder season now, it's November, and the daylight is dwindling. So I have to make use of the entire day. Just getting to the first portage and I noticed a black shadow on the shoreline and there's a black bear right at the portage. There's a few lakes I can bounce around with smaller portages just to give him his space. So I'm gonna do a bit of a sneak around. Believe it or not, that's the first black bear I've seen in Nova Scotia. It's a good reminder that there is wildlife out here and it's important to respect them. This portage is about a kilometer from where I saw it. So if he wanted to come over here and see what I was up to, he could. I'm walking back towards him now. All right, where are we to now? They were not calling for rain this weekend, but you never know. So it's always good practice to always bring your, your rain jacket. I did not bring a tent. I bought a tarp that I'm gonna set up for tonight and then the, the final night. See blue sky. Hopefully that's the end of the rain. Ginger mint. Gotta thank my buddy Jan. Jan's always bringing thermoses on these cold shoulder season trips. To Jan, cheers. It's definitely gonna be a full day to get to where I wanna get. Still got a lot to go. Oh, I would love to be staying in there tonight. It's part of the park. The park is closed. All right. I am out of the managed area. From here on out, the portages are gonna just be maintained by people like me and you. A lot more rugged, a lot more remote. It's gonna be upriver the entire way. I'm looking forward to getting to camp, drinking some water, getting my shelter set up and just stop moving for the day. I see it. I see it. Hardwood there, more wood there.
Oh, this is so cool. I don't like that. Ah, focus, Noah. I am tired, I am hungry, I am thirsty. Just gotta be really careful right now. There's a decent amount of wood here, all hardwood. I also picked up a few extra pieces from the cabin I passed. I just didn't know what to expect here. That feels so nice. Ah, oh, long day. Just building my rat's nest here. Got all my stuff organized. Feels really nice to be here right now. I didn't know what the site was gonna be like. I'm pleasantly surprised on how good it is and how much wood there is. So tonight we're not doing anything too fancy. I have ramen. This alone isn't enough calories, so I like to spike it. Two things I like to bring with me on all ramen trips is coconut powder and dehydrated mushrooms. It really kicks it up, gives it some calories, gives it more flavor, and it makes it more of a full meal. <laughs> That's a full package. That might be too much for one guy. I'll put that back on the fire to heat up. Let's go. It's 7, 7.30, still so dark. I probably slept 11 hours. It was a good sleep. So I'm gonna have a morning at camp before packing up and heading up river to the cabin. All the fluids are taken care of. I got tea, I got coffee, I got water. Yesterday I was very dehydrated. Don't wanna do that again. Fluid management's big out here. We got some red skies this morning and then the clouds are just ripping across the skyline. So I'm thinking that today's gonna to be some not the best weather. Luckily I'm going through a very intimate section of river. I should be protected on both sides and it's only about 15K to the cabin. Because I'm going up river and I don't know what to expect, I'm throwing on my dry pants from Kokatat. These will keep me dry if I have to do some wading, if I have to drag the boat, if I have to get in and out of the water. It's just a security blanket for me. I get a lot of questions about why I put the neoprene booty on the outside. Well, this isn't for warmth, it's for stopping abrasion between the pants and the shoe. If you don't have a neoprene sock, you could wear a normal sock, just something to stop that, that abrasion. I'll be starting this river with a kilometer portage to get around some of this bigger, steeper water right here. This area of Nova Scotia is heavily influenced by glaciation from about 10,000 years ago. 
So the landscape is a mix of depressions, which causes wetlands and ponds, deposits sediments, allowing for different types of tree species to grow, as well as scattered rocks that were dropped off when the ice was melting. Overall, it makes for a beautiful landscape, but can be sometimes pretty tough for portaging. A little gear malfunction. I guess I twisted on the cap too hard. That's not good. I'm sort of suspecting this might take longer than I think. So I'm not gonna mess around. I'm just gonna grind this out. Just finished up the last portage of the day. It's about one o'clock, another couple hours to get to the cabin. This underbrush in this forest, I think it's called Huckleberry. In Newfoundland, they call it hard hack. It's so strong and it just pulls at you when you try to walk through, constantly tripping over it. And that's just the terrain out here. Portages aren't that bad. River travel's not that bad. The worst thing is, is the wind. The biggest lake of, of today is right after this portage. It's about two kilometers, and I expect it's gonna take a little time. The wind's picking up. This lake already has white caps up ahead of me. And I'm still in the bay. That is far, man. I'm gonna do what I can and sort of just Try to sneak up the shoreline the best I can. A wind like this with one person is incredibly tough. Even with two people, it sucks. Guys, I came around the corner here. And I think I see an animal. Coming out of the last still water here. Just about there. Made it. Logbook. 
Looks like there are a few people here in October, which is surprising. This place is used more than I would expect. It's good to see people coming back here. The place is in immaculate shape. Obviously, it's the right type of people. Feels good to be here. Came here two and a half years ago, and I totally forgot how hard it was. Back here, it's pretty remote country. There are portages, like you can follow them. It's not a bushwhack, but they're still a little rugged. Notice the wood situation is not the best. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go get wood. The forest behind me is pretty sparse. It's gonna be slim pickings. The wood quality might not be that good, but I definitely wanna stock this place. So this piece is dead and it wraps up on the other side, but it's sort of a, an awkward cut. It'll go. It's really important when you come to these places to give back. You know, where they're really remote spots and getting supplies in here is really tough. So the least you can do is clean up, but it's always good if you can do a little extra. Chop some wood, leave some candles, do a repair. Whatever you can do, it's always best to do it. This is the official log book. I'm gonna read one randomly. It's long, but I'll read the first paragraph. We came in from the big lake for a two night stay here. It was a wet day with a bit of wind. We got here just before dark into the skies clearing for the best sunset we have ever seen. What a relief to get here after a very long day of paddling and portaging. This is our first time into this area. We were unsure what we were getting into, but what a spot. Wish we had more time to explore here. Kentville, Nova Scotia. Honeymoon trip for us. Let's go, guys. Where to do it? Yeah, these logbooks are really cool to, to look back at different people's stories, where they came from, what they saw. I'm making a dehydrated shepherd's pie. Back home, I made a mix of beef, vegetables and spices, and then I mix that with powdered mashed potatoes. And then on the side, I get a packet of gravy and then bring it all together. This 
probably not even nine o'clock. But that's all part of the game for me. Early mornings, early nights, full days. I woke up this morning kind of stiff, probably from the two full days of work. I'm getting older, you know, I gotta keep my body maintained. So I woke up, I did some stretching and it helped a lot. Over the last few years, I've been having some shoulder issues. I've seen a physiotherapist about this. They think it's actually something in my neck. I try to do as much neck stretches as I do shoulder stretches in the morning. Gotta stay limber. We got a few days ahead of us still. Heading back down the river today, so it should be a little easier. Sun's coming out too. Let's go. Just getting to the final portage before camp, the kilometer long portage. Home sweet home. Got another Moonlit Mountain freeze-dried food. It is the same as last time. Pasta with meat sauce. I really enjoyed this last time. And I'm excited for one more. I don't like the idea of eating out of a bag. My knuckles get all greasy. Really good stuff though. It's a couple hours before it starts getting light. I wanna get a lot of my morning stuff done before daylight. 
so I can get out on the water ASAP. I have a long day ahead of me, so I want to be very productive today on the water. A cabin's always a great destination, but for me, it's always about the adventure. Being outside, disconnecting from social media, and just going with the rhythm of the land. That's what it's all about for me. Well, that turned out to be quite the adventure. Including the detour, it was about a 75 kilometer trip, which had some big portages and some upriver travel. Overall, it was an excellent four days to the most remote cabin in Nova Scotia. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time.